It was a couple of years ago, and I was sitting backstage at a large conference center waiting to be introduced to speak at a national counseling convention. And right then, friends came up with a group of teenage girls, and Jennifer Barrick was among them. They quickly told me her story, at which point, oh my goodness, I was so amazed. And before they parted, right before I went out on stage to speak, Jennifer asked if she could pray for me. Now, I cannot quite explain this, but her prayer, it was so tender, it was so sweet, it was so poignant and powerful and so voiced straight from her heart. I knew right then that this young woman enjoyed an exceptional relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's why I was drawn to Jen in the beginning. But it was also clear from the beginning that Jennifer was still dealing with her disability and all the issues that go with it. Life for this young woman was obviously not easy. And of course, given my own disability, my quadriplegia as a result of a diving accident so many years ago when I was a teenager, Given my disability and our work at Johnny and Friends with special needs families, there was an immediate kinship, a connection that bound me to the barracks. And when I see Jennifer, I see myself so many decades ago. And I remember the people who came alongside me, people who God used to open doors of opportunity and expand the platform on which I was able to then share my story. I look back and I thank God for these dear friends. And I wanna be that kind of person in Jennifer Barrick's life. I wanna help open doors of opportunity, telling people about her story and sharing her testimony so that her influence for Jesus Christ will grow far and wide. How far? How wide? Well, all Jennifer has to do is keep focusing on deepening her walk with Christ, and God will take care of widening the sphere of her influence. As she works on the depth of her ministry, God will take care of the breadth of her ministry. And I'm just grateful that I get to sit on the sidelines and cheer her on, pray for her and her family, and enjoy watching it all happen. Several weeks ago, my husband and I, with our two children, enjoyed a wonderful vacation together. I took another family of four along with me. Miracle for Jen is the true story of a family adventure no one would choose. But as you hear the details unfold over the next two weeks, I think you too may come to see not victims of a devastating tragedy, but chosen vessels, recipients of gifts from God in unexpected packages that have taken the Barrick family above and beyond in their knowledge of God and in their influence for him in this world. November 5th, 2006 had been such a special day for Andy, Linda, and their children, Jen, 15, and Josh, 11 at the time. Josh and I, we were playing in a baseball tournament. Um, we actually won the championship that weekend. I was praying that Andy and Josh would make it back in time because I knew that would be very important for her, that her dad would see her in the choir concert. Andy and I coached together. Our two boys, uh, Josh, Merrick, and Zach, Clinton, our two boys were on the team. We had a great afternoon. We were, we were really trying to get home in time because um, Jen and my daughter Megan were both involved in, um, it was a choir. Uh, Sunday night choir service. I remember getting to church early. Jen had to be there early and I started saving the whole second row because Andy's parents were there, my parents were going to be there, and a lot of friends and it was exciting to have all our friends and family there. And it was beautiful. Later that evening we had no idea what was going to happen. 433 
15-year-old Jennifer suffered multiple skull fractures and severe brain trauma. She wasn't expected to survive the night. She spent five weeks in a coma. Many miracles and a long, hard journey later, Jen is here with her mother, Linda, to share a story Johnny Erickson Tata calls heartbreakingly wonderful. And I want to thank Johnny and Friends TV for that segment and many more to come. Welcome from Lynchburg, Virginia, Hello. Jennifer Hi. and Linda Barrick. What a privilege to have you with us. And miracle for Jen. Uh, Linda, you wrote the book yes. with John Perry. Uh, uh, this is not a criticism, but I would have called it miracles. Miracles, There yes. are so many. Yes. Yes. What were you meaning when you gave it this title? Was it Jen making it out of that accident? Well, there are so many miracles in the book, uh, just of God's power, the power of prayer, uh, the power that God saved Jen the night of the wreck, and then the power that he woke her up because she wasn't waking up. In fact, the insurance was going to send her home because she had to be awake three hours a day to do therapy, and our friends and family fasted and prayed that Jen Barrick would wake up for three hours a day, and she did, and then just the long journey that we've been on. But the the biggest miracle that I'm sure we'll talk about a little mm -hmm. bit later mm -hmm. is just how Jennifer's spiritual side and her soul was not injured even though her mind and her body was so broken so she didn't know who she was or where she was but she knew the Lord and she would talk to him and uh, it was just amazing and the book really ends with me talking about how this is not really the miracle that I prayed for because I was praying for God to fix her and get her back to her old life and yet God had something far greater in store and he's using her in huge ways because she is still broken in a lot of ways. We are going to be able to show and tell this journey over many segments. Does it bother you, Jen, to, to revisit that night, the accident? Actually, no, it does not bother me at all. I actually get very excited because God was in every detail and every aspect of that night not in the sense of the drunk driver and the accident, but on how he helped us every step of the way since then and how he's been our redeemer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember anything of the accident, Mom? Uh, the last thing I remember was watching Jen sing praise songs to the Lord. It was her very first choir concert, and she's just glowing and singing, and she was a much quieter person than she is now, and so she had all these private journals that she had written in her room, and there she was on stage, and you know how you're just proud of your children, mm. and she's glowing and beautiful and singing praise songs to her Lord. and. Uh, then we're driving home, we were gonna have a party, so we invited our family and friends to our house for a party afterwards, and we stopped by Kentucky Fried Chicken to get some chicken for the party, and less than a mile from our home, we were hit by a drunk driver who was going 80 miles an hour with his lights off, and we have no memory of, of him coming at us. Our son Josh was the least injured, and he remembers his father yelling, watch out. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, you know, I was turned around talking to Jen, who was texting her boyfriend in the back seat because mm -hmm, his family yes. was coming over and then all of a sudden I'm waking up and my face is just smashed up against this windshield and a crushed glass you know everywhere and I can't move and I mm -hmm. thought I was in a dream I thought I was in a bad dream and I wanted to wake up and get out of this dream and I started to say is this real or is this a dream and Josh my son was sitting right behind me and he said mom it's real and so we just immediately started praying out loud to the Lord there was nothing I could do I couldn't move I couldn't hug my children and I couldn't reach Jen. Uh, my husband was uh, right next to me and the metal was just morphed around my body and his body just within inches. Uh, and so just, I almost feel as if angels wrapped themselves around us to keep, a, to keep the metal from yes. crushing us internally. But we just cried out to the Lord. Josh and I started praying. And then as my husband came to, he started praying. And we were begging God for mercy and that he would save Jen. And we were hollering her name, you know, trying to wake her up. But she was not responding. You nearly lost an eye. Yes. In that. Yes. And my left lung collapsed, too. And um, just my whole left side was crushed, ribs, my foot, my arm. I didn't realize it at the time. My cell phone was ringing because our friends who were coming to our house were trying to reach us. And I tried to reach down and grab my cell phone, and, and my right arm worked. And I remember 
uh, all of a sudden I pulled my right hand up. I had touched my leg and it was covered in blood and I just couldn't figure out, you know, why am I bleeding? Where you were when hurt. you're in shock, you really have no feeling. I, I, it's a protective It is measure. a protection, isn't it? You, yeah, you're just numb, you're in shock and, and you have no idea of the pain and the pain comes in the next days, yeah. But God was with us. Yes. He was with us. Jen, we're going to be seeing in a segment coming up, uh, you singing on that stage with your high school choir. Uh, that was an over-the-top evening for you. Yeah, truly was. It was such a wonderful night, such freedom up there, and I could really feel God's presence like I never have felt before. And the way the night ended, never would have guessed, but... God has been with us every step of the way, and He still is carrying us one day at a time. This family has quite a spiritual heritage. Yes. Uh, you grew up with a traveling preacher dad. Yes. yes. A trailer all over America, yes, Linda. Mm -hmm. uh, very plugged into uh, Jerry Falwell's yes. church, the one that he founded, and the university there at uh, Lynchburg, Liberty University. Uh, was there any wrestling with God, was it something we said? Why this family? Well, I'll never forget uh, as Jennifer was emerging from the coma and she didn't know she was even hurt, but one day she looked at me and said, the question is, how are you gonna hold up under the test? And, you know, I'm in the wheelchair and I'm looking at her, test, what do you mean I'm in a test? You Jennifer know? said Jennifer this to said you. Jennifer said this to me yeah. and it was just the Lord speaking through mm -hmm. her. And now when I look back, it was like as if God was saying, Jennifer's going to be okay, but how about you, Linda? You know, you're the one that's going to struggle. And as a mom, there is there are no words to describe watching your child be in pain every day and your innocent child who did nothing wrong and who was singing praise songs to the Lord. And I was in a test and I had done actually a hundred TV shows with my father on a show called Lighting the Way. My dad is Dr. Ed Heinsen and we had talked about series, Life's Toughest Problems. Mm -hmm. We had done all kinds of series. And I, when I go back and look at those now, um, and watch myself, I'm smiling and I'm quoting scripture and I'm saying, if God chooses not to heal you, he'll give you the strength and it's all true, but I hadn't lived it. Mm -hmm. And now I could do those without the teleprompter, you know, because you've lived it. And it's, yes, God's word is true, but it's hard and you reach mm -hmm. a place where you doubt and you struggle. Has God been good to my family? Does he really love me? And I have to say to our viewers, looking at you two beautiful women, it, I found this a very long journey. Yes. Mm -hmm. I felt for you. I thought, oh, yes. Lord, not this, not that, not more. Right. And, uh, and yet it's so inspirational yes. to go here with you. Yes. Thank and you. we won't get all the details out in these segments. You are going to want to read the book. Yes. Here's how to get your copy. Jennifer Barrick was a beautiful, bright 15-year-old girl who was passionate about sharing the love of Jesus that she had found. She recorded intimate journals reflecting her deep desire to lay down her life for God, even if it meant she had to stand alone. A couple months later, the Barrick family was struck by a drunk driver leaving Jen in a coma for five weeks. When she awoke, Jen didn't recognize her family, didn't know how to brush her teeth or what to do with a shoe but she remembered scriptures and every word to every praise song that she had hidden away in her heart before the accident. As friends and family would gather to worship in the hospital, Jen would see Jesus there among them and she would reaffirm her commitment to do whatever he wanted her to do. Prayers for total healing were petitioned by many, but a loving God had something else in mind. Instead of making her normal, God is making Jennifer and the whole Barrick family extraordinary. They are living above their circumstance, beyond their own strength, and in the fullness of Christ as they trust in Him. Miracle for Jen is our thanks to you as you partner with us. We invite you today to become a Crossroads Foundation member with a monthly pledge of $30, a Builder member at $60 a month, or a Crossroads Council member at $100 per month. To receive your copy, call one 888 0003 with your membership pledge or special gift. You can also write us or visit crossroads.ca.